Coronaville, what's next? I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And we think of Coronaville, we think of the, the Coronaville trolley, if you will. Only nobody knows where it goes. Okay, we have Cynthia Sinclair, and she is the host of um, um, Finding Respect in the Chaos, which is still a very relevant discussion, absolutely. Stephanie Dalton, Stephanie Stoll Dalton, may I? Okay, and she's the host of What's New in the State, the State of the State of Hawaii, it's very valuable. And Winston, he goes by Winston, uh, like Beyonce, you know, um, but he's really Winston Welch. <laughs> And uh, he is the host of, what's your show's name? What was Out and About. Out and About, thank you very much. And so we, you know, we have a number of hosts here and we put our big horsepower together um, every Thursday at 11 uh, so we can discuss this, the state of Coronaville. And the title of our show is uh, something along the lines of, here we are in a second wave, right on schedule. Uh, so, Winston, are we in a second wave, or is it just my imagination? You know, maybe it's time that we stop thinking beyond uh, waves, that we just think that this is a pandemic, it's continuing, and it will, it will go like this all over the place, depending on what our policies are, I, you know, but it looks like if we're going to talk about waves, we're in the second wave, because it's hitting hard and it's hitting fast it's, and it's hitting young people. I saw Texas, third of the people in the hospital were between 20 and 29. So this is an equal opportunity disease. And uh, you know, Florida is getting hit hard. As they said, you know, a lot of these states where they've restricted, we're going to be seeing a lot more here shortly. But uh, what that means and how it plays out uh, is all part of the story. Well, let's see if we can find the uh, connected dots on this. So, uh, Stephanie, why? I love one one word questions. Why? Well, I, um, yes, that's that's the perfect word uh, to ask over and over again, which I do. And in thinking about it, I continue to look to the 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 release of tension about being. Closeted. Certainly, the people are young. They see that their group, until we have this latest data, is not as affected as other groups. And so, I think that they convinced themselves that they were scot free and could get out there and horse around and uh, juke them up and have a great time with no consequences. Why so did they think that? And, you know, just talking with you now, it seems quite irrational to to make that connection? Why, why do they think that? Why do so many people think that? Well, if you look at the data, if you're young um, and, uh, and not black um, and uh, not aged and not diabetic, not sick, you're okay. So far, that's what it's showing as far as I've looked at it. I'm mm -hmm. sure that most are looking Winston like just mentioned that the people in Texas are in their 20s. I think that is informative and that uh, we need to look to the children too, because with all of this release, they're overdoing it on top of it. So they're out there really making up for lost time now and uh, getting out from under that burden. But yeah. the burden is still with us. We have to respect it. Okay. Stephanie, why? Why do they feel that way? They, is it a matter of uh, uh, being emancipated from their homes? Uh, it's a matter of um, feeling cooped up um, and, and feeling that now they can, but why do they feel that way? Well, they also want their agency back. They don't want the government telling them what to do. So uh, it seems to me there's a large theme here of I want to do what I want to do regardless of this, this threat. And, and so I'm going to handle it my way, in my judgment, nobody's telling me what to do. And of course, then we're under this chaos of no national leadership and nobody out there doing what most presidents Ah, are. that's the point, Cynthia. Cynthia, I thought you would tell us about that. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, you got to think, too, that the young people, just standard human development knowledge is one of the things that's involved. because. You, we all know it's pretty common knowledge that between the ages of about 16 and 30, they say in every human development book, it's that you know, nothing can hurt me. You think you know, you're know you in, impervious to any kind of harm. So it's not just that we're getting the message from our, you know, our politicians that you can just 
well, not all of them, just mostly our president saying that, you know, you're okay without a mask. You don't need a mask. You don't need any of this. Everybody's worried for no reason. It's just a hoax. And down in the South, because of the way the misinformation is peddled down there, um, you know, and they don't bother to peddle it as much to us up here because we know better and they know it's not going to work. So they target who they send that misinformation to. And so I think that's part of it too. Well, if, if we had a president who, who stood there in the Rose Garden or wherever he stands and said, look, we're going to reopen now, but there's a certain amount of risk. Dr. Fauci just told us there's a certain amount of risk. So we're going to have to work together on this. It's going to have to go hand in glove. You're going to have to be careful. And you can't go to things and participate in, in activities that, that are likely to get you infected. And that, that, and that compromise, that, that sacrifice is the price we all pay to reopen the economy. So how about a little sacrifice? Do you think these, these kids, these people would get it, uh, that they would act a little differently? That, for example, they would say, I'm not going to go to the Tulsa rally and have 19 thousand people breathing on each other um thoughts about that well yeah. I, I just heard from the mayor of tulsa today this morning she was talking or the i'm sorry it was the county commissioner and he was talking about how most of the tulsa officials oklahoma officials said don't come because oklahoma is right in the middle of a huge spike in cases right now. So they asked him not to come, not just to change the date from when he's, you know, the first one that he, he had scheduled anniversary, but to, um, to actually ask him not to come at all. And so it's going to be a big deal for Oklahoma after this tomorrow's. Well, I, I heard him on the tube. Maybe he'll abide by that, but the chances are very small. I heard him on the tube uh, yesterday saying, oh, I think it's great. I think all these people are going to have fun. It's going to be my best rally. We'll all have fun. Um, and uh, I wouldn't give it up for the world. So he's probably going to come. And they're probably going to come. And, um, you know, and you know, there's, there's, a, there's a bright side to this. I'll tell you what I think it is. Is that, I'm sorry, but they're going to get sick. And there's going to be, if there's a huge spike in Oklahoma now and other states, uh, this is going to uh, accelerate that. Um, really nauseatingly high. Uh, and this, the press will cover. The press, every press will catch this. We'll know in two weeks' time uh, whether I'm right. <clears throat> but if there's a big spike, a huge big spike, at the end of two weeks' time, that is going to affect the you-know-what on November 3rd. Winston, what do you think? Will it? Uh, I think it's sad that we have to be at that point where we would get that. But, you know, as we're looking around the country, it's like a, Ohio opened up a month and a half ago. They haven't seen huge spikes, whereas other places have. But you're seeing vastly different pictures of how people are getting and gathering together. And uh, hot off the, the press, um, Donald Trump just said in a Wall Street Journal interview less than half an hour ago that Americans, some Americans wear coronavirus masks to signal disapproval of him. So you think about that message. So if you're a sane person who has been told by the World Health Organization, which he has discredited, or by the CDC, or by the, the FDA, or your doctor, hey, where, or your governor, or your mayor, or anybody else, your boss, wear a mask. Now, this is suddenly a signal of disapproving of Donald Trump. But he has people that actually believe that. So if you're, you love him, then you don't wear your mask. I mean, what is the message there? It's insane. Oh, well, the message is clear. If you if you love him, you don't wear the mask. And if well, you if you go to the nineteen thousand spectacular in Tulsa, uh, you love him. So that what he's really saying is, if you come to my rally, don't wear a mask. He's really asking for a, a complete and utter disaster. Well, this this politicization of of uh, wearing a mask it's not it's just nonsensical. But there's so much that we have witnessed that is nonsensical here, where we are willfully just not looking at uh, at science and that's what we basically have to go off of and as we're seeing different things here as resurgence come in 
uh, in, in Beijing, or as we're seeing certain ways that people are, are um, acting or not acting and how that's affecting the virus and, and, and uh, resurgences, we have to pay attention to the actual data rather than you know, in, injecting ourselves with bleach or not wearing masks or whatever comes out of people that don't have anything. You know, we're, I mean, there's interesting things that are coming out, like, um, you know, maybe your blood type is, is, is something that affects whether you get uh, sick. Uh, people that are O blood type seem to be not getting as sick, and people with A blood type seem to be getting sicker. That's an interesting one. Um, whereas uh, you've got, uh, um, I said that, uh, so, those types of things, that's based on science. Whereas the young people, Stephanie, as we were saying earlier, that they are going into the hospital, but they may not be um, becoming dying from the disease, but they may be getting more affected by it. Other information that- Well, I they may not, die. some of them will die, Winston, but and others, some will, will, die, but others will be, will be uh, sick on a long-term basis. And it probably also depends on how good your insurance is and how afraid you are going to, uh, to go to the hospital and how much you trust the doctors. Um, the other things that I, I read was that in China, they just had a recent study that came out that said, while people were getting, um, where they had tested positive or antibodies, they had been exposed to this disease three months ago, four months ago. At this point, they're testing that they're not even showing up antibodies anymore, which may explain why people are getting sick and then getting over it and then getting sick again. So. Uh, we're learning all kinds of things. We need to just tr trust in data. We need to trust in science. We need to see what's really happening on the ground everywhere and not rely on a political statement that if you wear a mask. Well, what, what do you mean by trust? Uh, you know, I mean, trust is a, that's a word that can be elusive. Um, and, I, you know, what I, what I, what I, my reaction to that is we have to have somebody cool, rational, trusting in science, talk to us. Science, um, reality. Yeah, not, talk to us. We don't see Fauci it. enough. And Fauci has no power. He can be relieved. And the task force is essentially gone. Uh, you know, what happened to Pence? He was supposed to be the chair. There is nothing happening in the White House about this disease. Uh, just this wild expectation of a reopening and, and uh, Suggesting to people that they not wear masks and 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 be free of the 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 bonds of the bonds of lockdown, um, it's really crazy. So my question to you and uh, uh, Stephanie, and um, taking into account the footage we have seen recently of Trump where he can't walk down a ramp, I don't know if you've seen that, and the footage where he he needs to reach out and hold people's arms in order to navigate, uh, you know, in a hotel ballroom or whatever. Uh, the footage we've seen where he is uh, trying to drink water from a glass, needs two hands to lift the glass to his uh, lips. Um, are we talking about some kind of disease process here? The fact that he can't think of words, the fact that he gets confused in the middle of his long-winded two and a half hour discussions in the Rose Garden, the fact that his position seems to change uh, like the breeze. Um, are we talking about somebody who is maybe sick? Well, I believe I've heard many commentators address that, that things are happening to him due to his chronology. And uh, he's not even much playing golf anymore, but he um, is having some um, difficulties due to at certainly age, but also his, um, well, he doesn't seem to exercise much. He doesn't do the gym. He's not really getting the doctor's information that is you know, informative for where he is in his life. But I, I, I think that um, we haven't paid enough attention to that. And certainly after what they did to Hillary Clinton on this matter, the, the, I don't know why the media is holding back on it. We really ought to have some answers to what are these issues that he's suffering. And certainly um, his mental capacity has been uh, discussed as well, that it's diminishing or it is what it is and always has been. I don't know, but there's some of those those unanswered questions that nobody is attending to. And it goes back to your, to the point of the, the media being nimble and getting a, off of the major main case that, that everybody's talking about and look at some of these ancillary issues that are gonna feed into. So I don't understand why they're not doing uh, uh, 
a better job of that. And then the other point I wanted to make is I, contrary to my belief that most everybody looked at CNN, evidently I am completely wrong. Because in my discussions with people, I'm finding out that CNN is considered um, the black hole of hell or something. And most everybody's uh, these of people who are in the belief in Trump are, are only looking at Hannity and Tucker. And so I've started looking at Tucker again and Hannity. I, I, he's hard to look at. But they are not putting out any information. That, and so that, that's why I ever brought this up to other people is because at least CNN does chop out the information, a chart here, a chart there. And it, uh, to me, it doesn't seem like proselytizing, but I think uh, my conclusion is more information on CNN for the average person than anything they're getting out of these other programs, which are not informative. In fact, deny and don't mention and skip over and focus on other totally irrelevant topics. So I think well, it, Cynthia, you know, taking all this into account, um, you know, the problems with coronavirus, he has not really resolved them. There, you get talk, you get misleading information or no information um, or, you know, sort of like third party information that comes from far away. We don't know how credible it is and, and it is not widely disseminated in any way. Um, so we really don't know. We don't know about therapeutics. We don't know about vaccines. Uh, and you'll have to assume that if there was a serious therapeutic and a serious vaccine, it would be all over the place, including Hannity. Um, so th that's a problem. And, and at some level of their consciousness, aren't people in this country aware that we have not really tackled the problem? Uh, and that it is, you know, it's burning through America. Um, and the, speaking of burning, you know, the, the demonstrations uh, uh, three weeks ago and until more recently uh, have not helped coronavirus. Uh, in fact, they probably exacerbated it. Every gathering exacerbates it. And then you have Trump, <clears throat> which, you know, he's beginning to show maybe some fissures in his capacity, physical and mental. How are we doing on the road to November? Now, how are these things affecting? I know that as, as uh, uh, Stephanie said, you know, we, we don't know what the other side thinks because we don't watch the other side that carefully. Um, but how is the country feeling about these things? Do you, there, there's been t polls recently indicating that Biden is way ahead. And I, I, I have to think that, the, you know, the hot news, the agenda points that are de rigueur on, on all the channels, which should be, at least on MSNBC and, and CNN, um, that they, they, mm, they are not running in favor of Trump. Uh, how are the people feeling? What does it look like? Well, look at the line outside the convention hall in Tulsa. They're already camped out for a week and people are coming in from out of state. How about that for bumping up the spike? So okay, I'm, not, I'm talking, but, but uh, uh, Cynthia, I'm talking about the, the country in general, not just Tulsa. Well, from what I hear, when I, when I talk to people, because I've lived all over in a bunch of different states, and I spent a lot of time in Alabama, and most of the people, and people that I thought were very intelligent, not racist people, still are such hardcore Republicans that they want to overlook the, the horrible levels of unfitness that we're dealing with with this president they just overlook them they're getting their judges they're getting what they want and so they don't care and that just it absolutely just amazes me when i hear these very intelligent people you know i i understand the ignorant people that don't know any better that are so um susceptible to that kind of misinformation that they get from hannity and tucker and those guys and when I watch Fox News, I'm just irate. I, how can you, you know, how can you tell people these lies? It's just not right. Because right now, at this level, before we even see the spikes that are going to come from this Tulsa rally, 21 states are seeing an 80% increase in cases right now. Um, Florida saw its highest um, spike to date, 3,000 people in one day. That, so, you know, you talked about Ohio not having too much trouble. 
I think that's because Ohio is being very careful about their opening. They're being very careful about which, you know, they really followed the actual guidelines that were put out there about opening which companies you open first, um, how you go about safely doing this. And I think they're a good model to follow, um, to be honest, because they've been so, so strict. Ohio, remember, was one of the very first states to close down. So they didn't get a huge spike to begin with. Like um, it, it all seems like chaos. So Winston, how, how are our federal agencies doing? I mean, the CDC, to me, it seems to have lost credibility. The NIH, the same thing. All the individuals that Trump appointed to try to address the coronavirus, um, they seem to be inert. Am I missing something? Is anybody at the federal level doing anything valuable here? Or has it dropped it all off on the states? And among the states, it, it seems like there's a, a huge lack of consistency, um, chaos. What do you think? I, I, we did get a, the, the CDC broke its silence last week and told us to wash our hands, right? We're not getting a lot of information out of there. Um, you know, that, which is sad. The CDC is a venerable institution that we should rely on for hard, fast science that is, should be among the most respected institutions, just sacrosanct. Um, and it's, it's, it's been sullied. We saw also, um, you know, Anthony Fauci sadly came out basically and saying, yeah, you know, I wanted to keep the masks for the uh, healthcare workers, which I got. Like, as soon as he said, you don't need to wear a mask on this, I thought, yeah, yeah that means go out and buy a mask, <laughs> was my feeling at the time. But if he had, in his, in fairness, if he had said, we're saving the N95 masks for healthcare workers because we really need these. They would have been stripped off the shelves in seconds. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up with a shortage anyway. Um, I mean, he's been marginalized. We don't hear a lot about him. I can't remember the last time we saw Deborah Burks, but she may, there may be, it's just overshadowed by all of the other news that's happened in our country. So it might be out there. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Ivanka is going to come out with a COVID handbag line and maybe we'll get more news that way. I, I really don't know what you expect from the, the federal government here, but we can look, just look at our state and we can say our state is doing it right. Hawaii is doing it right as best as we can. We need really strict controls if we're going to be getting people coming in here. New Zealand was COVID free. They let two ladies in from England. Now they got COVID again. A state, New Mexico, about the size of Hawaii, they've had... 452 deaths in a state the size of Hawaii. We've had about 20, not to trivialize any deaths, but very different cases where we can have control. And that speaks loudly to where we do have control. It's in our companies. It's, um, it's the airlines finally getting together and saying, if you're gonna be on our plane, you have to wear a mask. And not, they're saying right now they'll ban people if they don't wear the mask in the future. They need to land the plane and arrest people and say, just as if you weren't sitting down when the pilot said you need to sit down, uh, you're you're you're. It's a ban for life. I'm sorry, you have to wear your mask for two hours while you're going from you know Tulsa back to uh, Birmingham, Alabama. But you got to do it. So we're seeing the responses that are correct at the state, at the city, at the county, at the co corporate levels. That's where the leadership is. That's where the information is coming from. And that's what we have to rely on in this, as I've been saying for a while now. Well, something that, uh, Winston, something that Cynthia touched on is the press. <clears throat> you know, th these days we don't have the executive, I mean, as a rational entity, we don't have the Congress, uh, they're, they're, they're inert. Um, the courts are, are being fed with in, in, in inappropriate uh, uh, appointments, um, populated by the hundreds now. Um, you know, the branches of government, federal government are really non-functional, whatever, you know, however much you believe in the democratic leadership in the house, the, the three branches are non-functional. And they say that the fourth branch is really the press. The press is the one that can save us. Um, but you know what? I'm not sure the press is saving us. Well, what do you think about that? Now, mind you, we're in a pandemic. We're in a, a dire crisis, a set of crises. Um, is the press doing a good job at saving us, recognizing that they and maybe they alone have the power to do that? Well, they're part of the solution, just like our, our health commissioners, just like our mayors. I saw Gavin Newsom came out today and said, if you're going in a store, you need to wear a mask. 
end of story. This is not a political thing. It doesn't mean you support me or don't support me. What about the press? The press is part of it. So, but, but with the press, that's, the press is now a loose term. Um, if you want real information in this country, you've got to search for it. And there's certain, uh, certainly ones that are more credible than others. We should look towards our, I will call it mainstream media. I will not say that Fox is in there. Like Stephanie was saying, if you watch Fox, you get a completely different version of what the reality is out there. And they're talking about your freedom to not wear a mask rather than the reasons why you do need to wear a mask. I, I, that might not be a specific example, but it's an idea that shows you get a wide variety of sources, go with the strictest that you can find that makes sense and do your own research. If you want information about- anything, Well, you're talking about you though. What about the press? What is the press governing and acting as responsibly as it needs to act in the time of crisis? You know, Stephanie, uh, today, finally, uh, Facebook shut down some of Trump's ads. Um, they said those ads would not would be pulled off because they were hate ads. Uh, that's really something because Facebook was, you know, not going the direction Twitter was going last week by putting blue notes on some of his remarkable and, you know, hate comments. This time, uh, Facebook pulled it off. So they, they have joined the, the crowd, so to speak, with Twitter. Uh, my question to you is, is really the same. I mean, what can they do? What should they do? And are they, are they meeting their obligation to us as the fourth branch of government? So um, this fourth estate, would you agree with me? I, I'm no expert on this, but the Times and I think the Washington Post and Je the owner Bezos has taken a lot of hits from Trump. They just have been stomping on. We have the whole list of his lies. We have all of the, the check facts and all of that. So, I mean, I think that those two models are admirable, are stepping up to the plate. They could do it better. One of the things they know that there's the press and then there's the larger media, but a show like Rachel Maddow's, I don't know why she hasn't received any prize yet, but because she is a model also of stepping aside and looking at the, the background and seeing what's going on that's illustrative of the worst of this issue that she wants to make you understand. So she has a little, uh, you know, bigger picture to offer. Uh, I get, I mean, but different formats, right? But if we, maybe somebody, is anybody writing a book about this or doing? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, only John Bolton. Yeah, I'm only really kidding. Uh, well, think only Bolton. <laughs> but the thing is that the press let us down during the eight, the 16 campaign, okay? They just were so happy with their ratings. They never got down to the nit grit on this jerk. So we need to know who's doing it. It's such a good question. Who's doing it? Them in the most serviceable way for them. Yeah, because we, we can only turn to them and not all of them, only some of them. And, um, you know, there are not that many, um, you know, well-funded national network type newscasts uh, that, that speak to this and query are they doing a good job. But we're, we're out of time, I'm sorry to say, so it's time to wrap up, okay? Uh, so Cynthia, what is your wrap up today? And what is your prediction for what's gonna happen in the next week on Coronaville? Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> well, Trump disbanded basically the coronavirus task force, and that's why we won't see them anymore. He has declared success. We won. It's over. We won. And that's what he has put forth for us. So we have to follow, like Stephanie and Winston have both said, and I think we all agree on, is that we need to search out for ourselves, what the real deal is. So if we are in a- Sometimes that's hard. You know, for example, the numbers in the meatpacking plants have all been secreted. And when you, when you uh, consider that, then you wonder about what else has been secreted uh, by this administration and its friends. Uh, that, that means the people who don't wear masks, those are the friends. Let's go to, let's go to uh, Winston. Winston, what is your summary and prediction? More cases, um, wash your hands, wear your mask, do your part, even if others aren't. Uh, and lucky we live in Hawaii where people do their part and we collectively respect each other. That's You're going out much, Winston? I'm going out all the time now. And uh, we, because we have 
yeah, yeah, I go out all the time and I am not afraid to go out, uh, but I am very thankful that we live in a state. Well, let me, um, speaking for all of us, Winston, it's been wonderful knowing you and um, you, you should enjoy your freedom. I'll have a long <laughs> life in front of me, Jay, and it's gonna be continuing to wonderfully know you. But I want we, we, we have back. all enjoyed every single time we've met together. Speaking for all of us, from Thank the heart. You. Okay, Stephanie, you, you get to go last. Well, eyes on the prize. We've got <laughs> for the vote. We gotta get the vote out. That's all that counts at this point. Uh, hallelujah, DACA. I mean, we've really got some good things happening. Which are, which are inspiring and energizing. So let's use it to look at what it is we have to do as responsible citizens and to protect our democracy. We're, we're on the cliff. We've got to get back from the cliff edge. So I wanted to ask, I don't know if there's time, Jay, but what is it, I, I was, you mentioned earlier that the, the judges are being voted in, conservative judges by the Senate. Is there anything you can tersely say that is going to be the impact of that? over the rest of the, our life? It's lives. huge. These are, these are way right-wing judges, often unqualified judges, uh, even found so by the American Bar Association, who are going to serve for life and who are going to be handing down rulings that favor Trump and favor the right wing for life. And there are hundreds of them that have been appointed and immediately quietly confirmed. Um, query, is the press doing enough on that? Anyway, one thing is clear, we're doing enough and we're gonna to continue to do enough. And there's so much material here, it's like a, it's like a water faucet. Um, and we'll, we'll meet next week and gosh, who knows what we'll, what we'll have to discuss on coronavirus. Thank you very much. Cynthia, Stephanie, Winston, I love you guys, aloha. <laughs>